Guess what? On a month over month basis, the average price of a home actually increased. Look at the industrial lease rates. They are up 48.9% on a year over year basis, but still the average one bedroom is $2,633 damn dollars a month. This is why I bought real estate. Today, folks, we're talking about Canadian REITs that have fallen off a cliff so damn bad. A lot of these stock prices are where they were during the 2008 financial crisis. It is absolutely bonkers. As we're going to be talking about the Rio Canada one of my favorite Canadian REITs. We'll talk about cap rate. We'll take a look at the broader industrial REIT sector and why I'm so intrigued by the industrial sector. We're going to roll back, but first and foremost, take a look at some sector-focused ETFs to give us an idea of how much the entire REIT sector has changed based on what ETFs are doing. But if that is a conversation you'd appreciate, as always, hit that like button for my wonderful dividend and passive income investors that exist out there. But first and foremost, take a look at the Vanguard FTSE Canadian Cap REIT Index because this kind of weights uh, REITs based off their market cap like many of the Vanguard products do and this thing literally has wiped out pretty much an entire decade worth of gains. I don't know if it's presenting as a buying opportunity, but I do like breaking down the components and which they have changed pretty dramatically is the largest basically REIT focused company is First Service Corp, which isn't really as much as a REIT as it is a real estate service company. Next in line, you have Canadian Apartment Properties. We'll take a brief look at and of course, Rio Cam being third in line. I think a little bit of industrials down here like Granite, but First Service Corp, what a stock, man. In the backdrop of one of the worst REIT markets we've seen since 2008, this thing has been on a tear. Since it's an IPO, it's still up a whopping 480 damn percent. Dividend yield, I know, isn't as attractive for most people buying REITs, but hey, at least they've over doubled it in the last 10 years and has basically been the best performing Canadian real estate based stock in the last decade. It's kind of mind blowing. And this is basically the largest provider of residential community and amenity management services because it doesn't matter what's going on in real estate. If you are hiring management, especially at condos and amenity management, you know that that's going to be a stable cash flowing industry for you. You're not stuck to the volatility of, you know, mortgage rates and, you know, dealing with obviously the fluctuations in real estate prices. It's one of the largest providers of essential property services. So uh, this is a really intriguing company I've never really looked into before. But when you take a look at their uh, adjusted EPS, for the quarter over quarter going from $1.17 to $1.25 on the three month, on the nine month going from $3.02 to $3.56. Like this company is doing exceptionally well in the backdrop of a terrible market. So let's take a look at Canadian apartment properties. And this one I'm bullish on. It's trading down. I think it is presenting a fairly favorable buying opportunity. And here's why. Now, firstly, the dividend yield is 3.21%. And unfortunately, I can no longer look these up on Google. I don't know why Google Finance has kind of removed the Canadian tickers for some of these REITs. But still, this is, should be Canada's largest REIT. But because of the suppressed market, it is now under trading for a service corp. But taking a look here, I think it's a buying opportunity primarily for a few reasons. First, the dividend is proving to be stable here. Unlike a lot of REITs, we didn't see any real dividend cuts. Not a lot of huge increases over the last decade. And again, and this is a stock that usually provides pretty reasonable returns outside of the last five years. So what's been going on here? Well, first and foremost, they've been dealing obviously with the increased interest rate environment. But what's very intriguing to me is the uh, rental uh, prices have gone bananas. And this is purely a rental focused REIT. They're not dealing with retail or industrial. They're just owning buildings that they are renting out. And as tenants turn over with a REIT like this, they are going to see the increased bonus of new tenants coming in that are paying the market premium price to rent. I mean, you take a look at this like Young and Eglinton apartments, and these aren't like new buildings. I mean, they're, they're fairly older buildings. And you can see that a bachelor to a two bedroom in this kind of uh, apartment here is renting anywhere from 2000 to 3100 uh, a month. And th that only includes some of the utilities. I mean, you look at Park Vista Apartments in Toronto here, 2200 to 3100 for up to a three bedroom. Uh, then you got one in North York, which apparently one to three bedrooms, they're only really quoting at around 2300. I mean, these prices are starting to accumulate and they have earnings coming out and something tells me we're going to see what we've seen over the last few earnings, which is basically they're going to continue to see an increase in rental income, but because interest rates are going to hinder some part of their portfolio, and they're going to be paying higher debt, that's also going to eat into some of those returns. But as we head into an interest rate cut environment, where rates start coming down, they're going to start seeing the a huge benefit from a lot of what they got going on here. So keep an eye because we do have those earnings coming out, um, which is that November 9th. So maybe I'll do a specific video on that as well. But let's talk about the Rio Can, a REIT that uh, we still own and have exposure to here with a whopping 6% dividend yield. I've always stated these are the kind of stocks you're not buying for growth. These are your retirement kind of stocks. You're going to be buying them and just holding them for cash flow because Rio Can hasn't offered any real capital return. And they had to deal with the pandemic that kind of devastated the retail environment. But taking a look at their top uh, basic uh, you know, tenants as it stands today, very intriguing at 4.8% Canadian Tire. TJ, 
uh, X company is 4.6, Loblaws at 3.9%, Cineplex 3.3, you got Metro at 2.5, Walmart at 2.2, Sobeys. Like this is mostly on court. Even Shopify is their 10th largest tenant here. Like these are AAA rated tenants. They're not going anywhere anytime soon. They, they're very, you know, on court and in a safe manner. And if we kind of break down the earnings that came out for this company, and there's a lot of metrics in here I want you to pay attention to. First and foremost, revenue, which I'm going to touch on, has been declining. I'm going to explain to you why revenue has been going down. But basically, from a, a dividend standpoint, you, go, you don't have to worry. Their payout ratio to funds from operation is 60.4%. You can see that their total assets sit at about $15 billion. Total debt is only 6.8, which is quite manageable for them. As we can see, their interest rate, uh, basically their average adjusted interest rate right now sits at, uh, what is that, about 3.77%, uh, which has been increasing basically you know year over year as they come up with renewals on a lot of their mortgages. So they're actually still in a pretty healthy place considering the average interest rate. You can't really get under 7%. I mean, getting around 6 to 7 is lucky these days. So we'll probably see this continue to increase at least until interest rate cuts come. And we can actually see their net NAV value, which is something I really wanted to pay attention to here. According to their book value, so that's again, as it's kind of minusing liabilities here is $25.49. Their NAV value hasn't really changed that much over the last, you know, nine months here. If we take a look going from 2592 to 2573, they haven't really changed a whole lot in value. So it's crazy that the stock's trading at this level, which could present a reasonable buying opportunity, as we can also take a look at rental revenue over the broad revenue, because they make revenue obviously selling inventory of new condos they're building. But my real interest is in the rental revenue, because this shows the stability of the underlying clients, because that's mainly their business, right? Is they're renting it out, and we want to see how retail's doing. And we can clearly see that retail is doing pretty good because the rental income has actually increased on the nine month and uh, has actually increased on a quarter over quarter yearly basis. So uh, not a crazy increasing. We're not talking about crazy growth here by any metric, but a company that is stable and is clearly going to be able to provide dividends and stability in a tougher market environment. Um, but again, we're not talking crazy dividend increases. They'll probably increase them more going forward uh, because, you know, they cut them coming into the, uh, you know, the pandemic to try and stabilize their balance sheet, which I think was a better positioning for them. And I think they're in a healthier place today because of it. So let's talk about a few other sectors that I find intriguing. One that I'm hyper focused on, and that is the industrial sector, spe specifically here in Canada, because a lot of these industrial rates like granite have been generally trading down uh, since their peak of 2021. I've been looking at granite, uh, Dream Industrial has been pulling back still, and I want to break down exactly why I like the industrial sector so much, and it has to do with data coming out of the Toronto Real Estate Board. And with no surprise, with TikTok ruining everyone's like actual factual information that the whole market is coming down like a vengeance, and there's so much inventory, and yes, inventory is increasing, but hey, guess what? On a month-over-month -month basis, the average price of a home actually increased, and on a year-over-year -year basis, it's still up 3.5%. Real estate is not crashing in Canada yet, yet. I don't know. I can only base my reality off what the data I have today represents. And this is for October, damn it. So like, there's nothing really insane about this, but what makes me so intrigued is you have to take a look at the data on the specific sectors. And this is why I am so baffled and intrigued by the commercial sector with the industrial leasing. Look at the industrial lease rates. They are up 48.9% on a year over year basis. Whereas the average commercial lease rate, which is concerning for companies like Rio Can, is down 45%. You don't want to be in retail right now, folks. Look at the average office lease rate. It's only gone up 1.7%. So industrial is where the world is headed with e-commerce. There is a huge demand for industrial. And let's just take a look at condominium stats again here. This is why I think things like Canadian apartment properties are so valued because the total of condo apartment sales are increasing 6.2%. I think there's a lot more new listings on the market for this. But when you take a look at the average one bedroom apartment rent is continuing to go up and is up 6.1% on a year over year basis. But what's really good is total new listings have actually come up on the rental side. So maybe that's helping in cushioning a little bit. Bit, but still the average one bedroom is two thousand six hundred and thirty three damn dollars a month this is why i bought real estate in one of the worst freaking real estate markets on the planet because hey at least my monthly rent so we got two bed two bath and we're our total monthly expenses come nowhere near close to 200 2600 a month you know how crazy that is and it's still going up I mean, like, who cares if the real estate value goes down so long as you have controllable finances and you can pay most of it off? I mean, just move out and rent the place. I mean, the amount of cash flow freaking condos are in 
rental apartments are cash flowing these days. It's so nuts if you're putting a higher deposit down. It's nuts. Like this is the first time in Toronto where if you have money to own a place for a rental property, like if you're putting a sizable down payment, your cash flow should be coming very reasonable. And if you can sustain into the interest rate cuts, my God, man, like you're going to be cash flowing like crazy in the future. Like this is the best opportunity to buy real estate in my humble opinion. And it's the best time in my opinion to be paying attention to industrial real estate. I mean, there's no doubt about it. There, there is some real opportunity presenting itself in these stock prices crashing. I've been looking at things like stag industrial in the US, and I'm curious if the industrial sector in the US is seeing the same kind of demand, because clearly there's not enough industrious buildings in Canada. So in the US, I'm very curious to see, like, you know, are they seeing the same kind of metrics? Because every time I look at stag industrial, the revenue continues to grow. I mean, there's still big demand in the US for this. The rental income went from 484,000, what is that, million, I think, to five. 122 million, um, like crazy huge increases, right? They had some expenditures go up and they are paying more on the interest expense. Obviously, we're seeing a pretty healthy little chunk of an increase there. So their net income, not sure uh, why it's down so much on a year over year basis, but the rental revenue is still going up. So some things to pay attention to, right? But in Canada, that's where I think a lot of people should be fixated if you're more or less looking at specific REITs. But I'll pass the question off to you. I'd love to know what you think in that comment section below.